Facebook community, this is Pedro Sanchez Jr. It's a privilege for me to be here today. As, as you know, I'm a leadership coach and financial coach, and we have the opportunity to and honor to have Mr. George Ross with us. He was a celebrity apprentice judge. He was part of the Trump organization for 47 years and a best-selling author. So for me, I want to officially thank you, Mr. Ross, for agreeing to talk to me today. Oh, Fresh, fine. That's fine. I'm happy to talk to you, but if you're going to call me Mr. Ross, we won't talk. You got to call me George. And that's why I love. Otherwise, you put me, you make me feel too old. And that's why I love George. That's why I love George. So, okay, great. All right, George. So, before I go into the questions, I would like to also honor uh, my coach, JT Fox, for connecting us. So, okay, great. JT's a good, good, yeah, good coach. And I'm glad. I think we both get something out of this interview. Yes, sir. So, uh, I want to focus on a, a couple of questions about success. Um, coming from the Latino community, uh, I know we have fantasies and, and, and ideas of, of what success is. So I want to I want to hear from yourself with all the years experience that you have, George. You know, why are people afraid of taking action from your perspective? It's very simple because we're, we're, they're afraid of failure. And failure is where you learn. You learn more from failure than you ever learned from success. So if you haven't failed, you haven't lived. It means you didn't have enough courage to do something that was it was worthwhile. So that's the reason. If you can't, you can't be successful if you never tried something. That's, that's amazing. I, I'm not saying you continue on or that you should always be, but no, but you have to, you have to keep trying and to figure out you, when you, when you fail, you, you get the sick feeling in the pit of your stomach. What did I do wrong? When it goes right, you never say, what did I do wrong? Cause everything went right, but you don't know why it went right. It could be a 10 out of 10 reasons. But you always can figure out what, it, what you, in your mind, why you failed. That's amazing because, you know, our, our culture and the Latino culture, as you can see, success in Espanol, our, our Latino culture, they, they tell you, you know, keep pushing, keep pushing. And they don't give you, they don't teach you how to stop when you fail and assess the situation. That's unfortunate. Then they're not teaching. Right. Exactly. You know, it's, it's, it's when you go through life, <coughs> just, there are many situations that don't, don't work and you have to abandon them quickly when they should be abandoned, as hard as it may be. It may be monetarily hard, personal relationships are hard, but you have to get out of a bad situation. It'll only get worse. So that you have to be, be man enough or woman enough to recognize that and take a hard stand. Then you'll be successful. If you don't, you're gonna be, you, you know, you, you're gonna have a problem all along because you're, you're not strong enough to face defeat. Wow, that's, that's amazing. So one question that came out last night as I was studying, can you achieve success by being complacent? No. And why is that? Because it didn't, you, you didn't achieve it. You became lucky. Mm, so, lu so lucky means it's, it, it's temporary, just, just happened, but you Not don't temporary. have to. It could, be, it could be forever, but you didn't achieve success. It happened. You were in the right place at the right time doing the right thing, and it worked out. Okay, but you had nothing to, but it wasn't you or anything that you did to make it happen. So all you did is you muddled your way through life and it was good. You had a good community, whatever it was, or a good family life, but you didn't do anything to, to do it yourself. You just went, went with the flow. You weren't a leader, you were a, you were a follower. And it worked out you were following the right leader. Or so it, was, it was easy, but you didn't accomplish it. What you don't have in that situation is you don't get the feeling of accomplishment. You didn't do anything. So if, if you have a cause and it's not a popular cause, but you fought like hell for it at that point, right, you lost, but you accomplished something. What happens the other way? You got the cause, but you say, yeah, but I'll never win, so I won't even push it up. I won't even push it. That's not accomplishing anything. That's, that's doing nothing. That's the easy way. Most people take the easy way. And I believe that's, that's why you see less success because complacency, you're set up to fail, not grow, um, especially when you have your surroundings around you, uh, family members that haven't made it, friends that haven't made it, and you have a dream to push through or, or an idea. And because they, they want to push you down, you don't know how to push through. And I think, and I think that's the importance of having core people around you. And I think the importance of coaching, I think that's a key factor. Um, and why do you believe, George, that people 
don't believe in coaching or hiring a coach. They don't maybe don't believe that it's important. Well, they don't feel it's important. They don't they don't realize their shortcomings. And also at that point, they don't want to spend the money to have a coach. It's not worthwhile. It's like, a, why should I go to a doctor if I don't think I'm a sick? You know, it's why should I do it? And it's, it's, they are not concerned enough about what they are or where they what, what the well being is enough to get a coach. A good coach is someone who is not involved financially with you and is the ability to analyze, listen to what you say and come up with a, 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 a conclusion and to help you out to fill in a gap where your short shortcoming is. And most people don't want to re, don't want to dwell on their shortcomings. They want to tell you how much money they made and what I did. They're not going to tell you what they lost or what they can't tell you what, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not happy in my, I'm, I never got married. I got divorced three times. I hate my children. Well, they're not going to give you that. Those are going to tell you the good things. Most people don't want to explain, don't want to tell you the bad things. Is a good coach there to tell you what you want to hear or what you need to no, hear? No, tell you if a good coach tells you what you want to hear, it's not a coach. Good coach should never tell you what to, a good coach should tell you what I what I think based upon what the information that I have, which got nothing to do with what you want to hear. And uh, then you're not being a coach, you're not being a true coach. So if you get somebody that comes there and you say, so what should you do? I said, first thing is, I'd get out of the business you're in because you hate it. Or get out of this relationship because it's bad. It may not be which, but I make a lot of money. Yeah, but money is not the answer. If you want to make a lot of money and be unhappy, continue what you're doing. If you want to make less money and be happy, here's what you should do. That's what a good coach, that's what a coach can do. Now, what, what the, 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 the pupil who's being coached can decide for themselves. Do they like it? I don't like it. I'll, I'll go. That's up to them. If a coach tells it like it is, not like they would want to hear it. And, and, I, th and I think that's what, that's what drives me to JT, listening to JT and, and, and seeing his style of coaching, which I know you've been coaching him for, for close to 10 years or more. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, and I can see, I can see how effective – even though sometimes some people don't like it the way it's it's said, but yeah, some yeah. people just need the truth. The truth will set you free, but yeah, some yeah. people don't want to know the truth, and that's why they. Stay and and he, you're right, and the thing is, with, with coaching with JT, it's easy. He knows the answer, but he doesn't like it. All right. So at this point, he'll call me. What do I think? And I say, JT, you already know what you should do. For God's sake, go do it. Yeah, but I just wanted to hear you say it. Okay, that's fine. I don't care about it. But he should have the. He knows what should be done. And many often the people in in that capacity, they know what should be done. They just don't have the courage to do it. And, and on the opposite side, somebody that's starting new as as being coached by somebody, they 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 assign that they they contact the person or want to get mentor to coach. When the coach tells them what to do, they still don't do it because now. You know the imposter syndrome will come up, or the, uh, being afraid. That's all, that, that's that's up to them. They don't never say do it. It's a question of relativity. If you're not going to, if if you're not going to listen or be guided by what the coach tells you, then don't go. Don't get coached. I'm not saying you have to do exactly or say give up the business or what it is, but the coach has to tell you here's where I think you ought to go, and uh, based on the, the knowledge or information they have about you. And uh, that's their should be their unvarnished opinion, and you can use it or not use it. That's up to you. But uh, the coach, coach should tell you at least this is what I think. And I've done that many times. I've told people, "Hey, you're in the wrong business." Yeah, but I'm making a lot of money. Well, if you want to make a lot of money, you're in the right business. You want to be happy, you're in the wrong business. Mm. You make the decision. You know. So it, you have to indicate what do they consider to be most important in their lives. And you say, here's how I think you should get it. It's not binding on them, but that's your thoughts based on what you've learned. Yeah. So, so coaching is so coaching for those, for example, in, in our, in our culture, you don't see coaching a lot. Um, but I think coaching, what I've learned from, from my experience will save you so much time and headaches of mistakes that okay. somebody already, already did that can save you a, a lifelong of errors that could cost you a lot of things. Absolutely. I wish when I was younger, I had a coach. 
I really wish. I think I would have saved a lot of time and aggravation, probably maybe dollars too. I don't know. Never had a coach. My father died. He was the closest thing to a coach, and he died when I was 16. Wow. So that, so I never had it. Yeah, were there mistakes I made? Yes. Could they have been avoided if I had a coach? Maybe. I don't know, because I didn't have it. Correct, correct. Right. But I, I think, would it have been helpful? Yes. If I had somebody, to tell, when I posed the question, they said, here's what I think you ought to do, and they were interested in, in my best uh, concerns or my interests, then I'd say, fine, I'd I like to get the opinion. The closest thing I had to a coach was my wife. She had some good, good sense, feminine sense at that point, and so she said, yes, I would go do it. Don't do it. Now, sometimes I followed what she said, sometimes I didn't. But nevertheless, she was a coach. She told me like it was. Mm -hmm. You understand? And of course, she had a personal relationship because she wanted me to succeed because of the fact that yeah. I'm a, a husband and family and what have you. But yeah, that was as close as I got. And she's been, but that's one of the things that bothered me is she was always right. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, right now, I'll be like, yeah. I hated, that. George, yes. I hated that because I didn't think she was right at the time, but as time went on, she was right. And I hated it. So why didn't I listen? I could have saved six months of aggravation. So do you have to listen to the coach? Well, one of the things that I, I learned, George, was what, what Mr. JT teaches is uh, speed of implementation. Um, I did not know because nobody shared with me and already even told me in my, in my circle that you could have bought a seat on the table uh, to get the right people around you, right? Yeah. So, so when I heard JT... And he offered, you know, uh, to coach somebody for three months uh, and, and through Clubhouse. I said, I felt it. I felt it inside of my spirit. I said, this is my chance. I don't know out of the 400 people if I'm going to be the chosen one, but I have to give it a shot. I have there to go. message, message him and whatever happens, happens. No, I have to give it a shot. That's it. That's the world. That's life. I have to give it a shot. You give it a shot, see what happens. You don't know because you didn't give you didn't give it a shot, you'll never know. That's but right. You know, life saying, I wish what would have happened if I did it. You don't know. You know what happened if you did do it, you can say what happened because it was a fact. The other is just speculation. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, that's, so um that, that's that's the key. Give it give it a shot. And that's what a good coach should tell his people. Give it a shot or it or you'll never do it. Give it up. It's just not in your makeup to do that. That's it. That's it. So, so the what if, you know, you cannot leave life with the mindset, what if? Yes. You know, I think you got to give it a shot. You have to give it a shot. Whatever it is, a shot in business, in uh, personal relationships, in religion, in environment, all of it, give it a shot. And if you give it a shot, if that maybe it's successful as you thought or not as successful, but I gave it a shot. But if you don't, you sit back and say, gee, I wonder what would have happened if I did that. You'll never know the answer to that. That's right. That's right. But in your mind, you would assume it would have been better. No, 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 no. Because you didn't do it. That's right. That's you right. know what you did do and where you got what you said. But if I did something, it, might have, it would have been better. But you don't know that. That's right. But that's and, what you, assume. you don't assume it would be worse. That's right. Any result, George, any result needs sac sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> I think, you know, for our culture, for people that are listening to me, you know, you have to sacrifice by giving something a shot. You have to go that, for it. You 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 not sacrifice. You have to make a decision. That's Whether right. The sacrifice depends on the result. Say, I'm going to take the shot and see what happens. Maybe it'll be as successful as I thought. Maybe it'll be less successful. But somewhere along the lines, at least I tried. That's right. And I got out of it if I should get out of it or I continued on or it morphed into some other relationship, which happened. You don't know where it's going to lead, but I gave it a shot. That's right. So that, that was George Ross. Give it a shot. Give it your best. Give it a shot on a new relationship, new idea, new business. Um, get you a new coach. Do something for yourself to see your better tomorrow, better future. So thank you, George. You're welcome. I appreciate good, your time. Good luck. You'll be very well in, 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 the, in the coaching and, uh, you know, help people out. They need all the help you can give them. Yes, sir. Thank you for that counsel. We'll do. Okay. Take care. Thank you very much.